What is going on guys? How's it going? And boys, as you know, I'm a United fan and I didn't want to do a review of last week's game because I was that. You ever feel that annoyed? Do you ever feel that annoyed? Yeah, do you? Yeah. There's no one here with me. So, um, Thank you for joining me. Quick announcement, watching this on a Friday or a Saturday, I don't know, Saturday night, 9pm Australia time, Melbourne time. I'm going to be live streaming on Twitch, the Manchester United vs. Brighton game. And I might even live stream and sit and watch the other games after it if I'm not tired. So come and join me. Grab yourself a beverage, Gino. Come chill. Good vibes. I might play a little bit of music. You can see me angry if we're losing or happy if we're winning. Um, but yeah, it's a good time. Good times, good vibes. Like, subscribe, all that snazzy stuff. We'll jump straight into the first game. Brighton vs. Man United. Terrible display by United. United washed every single bit of hope away from me last week. It was terrible. I mean, that's a whole different podcast for its own. If I think from from now, there's like 10, 11 days left of the transfer window. Um, apparently, United got to hand in their final offer, which I think is around 90 mil for Sancho. <sighs> if we don't get Sancho, if we don't get Tellers, I think the big thing is the defensive worries. The defense is terrible. I know speaking to Senior, mate of the podcast has been on, and he said, I think Bai and Maguire has to be a starting partnership, which I agree with, because Bai does have that extra bit of pace, but he's also got the ability just to go a couple of brain farts, as they say. Um, but yeah, against Brighton, I've got United winning 2-1. I don't think it's going to be a convincing win, if I'm totally honest. I think Rashford hasn't been performing much. Obviously, the season's just started, but didn't play that well last week. Um, also... Didn't have the best of post-lockdown. So season 2.0 pretty much from last season. And I think Lamptey could have him in his back pocket. Lamptey is a hell of a player. He looks extremely solid. Um, so that's a very cool battle. I think Greenwood has to start. Has to start. I think Bayer should start. Henderson played well in the Carabao Cup. Does he, I, don't th- I don't think he will start. But I think Henderson 10, 15 games into the season... I think should become a number one goalkeeper. I think he grew up in the youth academy. He's, I don't know. Look, I think, I hope United win. Come tune in to the live stream tomorrow night, 9 p.m. I'm going to be on Twitch, link in the description. It takes us to the next game, the team that Man United lost to, Palace versus Everton. Now, I've gone for a 2 all draw here. I think Palace, is that Wilfred Zaha might be finally, I think this year definitely is last season at Palace because the way he played against United... Nomi Gusta, mate. He tore us apart. And Everton's on good form, but it's also Everton's first real kind of challenge, which is, is a bit weird. I think Everton should win, but I'm thinking away from home, Palace, massive confidence booster from last week. And I'm just thinking, how long can this Everton wave ride? Look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to two Hummers Rodriguez, absolute wicked of a goal last week. Class. It's so cool to see him, and he's actually he's delivering so far. I know his two games still early days, but he's delivering. Allen is a cracking player. Calvin Lewin, Richarlison. Everton's exciting. Everton is a very exciting team to watch. But I'm going for a two-all draw. I think Palace have got to come come for the challenge, and it should be should be a good little batch. Next, West Brom Chelsea. I'm a big fantasy player. And, you know, I think the new thing is you captain whoever's playing against West Brom. You know, Dean Garner, good player for them last week against Everton. But they're up against Chelsea. Havertz scored a hat-trick in the in the Carabao Cup, which was, again, massive confidence booster for a young kid. Yeah, it was against a bunch of donuts in the Carabao Cup. But, hey, goal's a goal. Um, I think Werner will get off the mark here. I'm going Chelsea 3-0. I think easy win for them. Thiago Silva could possibly start. He started the other day. Chilwell came off the bench. So I think slowly we could be starting to see their full strength team come into tuition, 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 I don't know. But but yeah, I think Chelsea 3 0, a comfortable win, not much there. Next up, Burnley Southampton. I'm going to go for a one wall draw. I think Burnley. Eh, just a bit. Eh, like, eh, Burnley, not bad. Um, I don't know where a lot of their goals are going to come from, though. I think that's a bit of the worry for them this season. Um, whereas Southampton, I think 
I think people expected a bit more from him. They got pumped by Southampton last week. Danny Ings got off the mark. Shea Adams, I think people had a little bit more expectation for him starting the season. But again, we're talking about this is the third third game, third third round. There's still so much more football to play. Sky's the limit still for the league, how the rest of the season takes fold. Um, but I'm seeing a one-all draw. I'm not, I don't know. if Yeah, I'm seeing a one-all draw. Stock, stock standard. Next up, the new team, Leeds Lookout. That's it. Ditch Brighton Watch. We've got the Leeds Lookout. Leeds up against Sheffield United. Leeds again. They've scored seven goals. Or yeah, they've scored seven goals in two games. Conceded seven goals also, which I think was very well expected. Everyone knew that Bielsa comes in and he plays attacking football, so they got to score, but they're also got to cop a lot. Um, against Sheffield, which will be interesting because Sheffield's not really known for their attacking prowess. Um. But they are defensively quite solid. From last year, they were quite solid. Don't think Sheffield would have got over the same season. I've gone Leeds for a 2 0 win. Um, keeping a clean sheet could be questionable, but I think I think Leeds will get get the win, second win in a row. And I think the Leeds lookout is on fire. Takes us next to the next batch: Spurs versus Newcastle. And Spurs, I tell you what, they've been in the news for good reasons. Gareth Bale signing, Regulon signing, the pin, pinch Regulon from United. It's, it's, I mean, Bale, I don't think it's a signing that, you know, that would have had made the same impact if he came three, four years ago. And I don't think anyone thinks that. But he's still injured for four weeks or so. But then that makes it, let me, let me, let me know in the comments, how does their, their front three rank? Son, Kane, and Bale. Is that the best attack trio in the, in the league? Second best? Let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, I like regular. I don't know. He, he might start against Newcastle. I don't think Newcastle will be in too bad either. But I'm going for a Spurs three-run win. I think Harry Kane will. You know, he got four assists last week, and Son scored four goals, which is crazy. Um, I, I traded Son out of my fantasy team too. So thanks. Um, but yeah, I'm going three-one win for Spurs. I think. Jose Mourinho, I think a lot of people are underplaying Mourinho's effect on Tottenham. I don't think his, obviously, standard or style of play is quite up with the times, but everywhere he's gone, he's won a trophy. And I could, I think, I'm going to go and say Spurs win the FA Cup this season. And even though it's the FA Cup, which really the teams who only make it past the quarterfinals start taking it, like, considered a proper trophy, um, I don't... Instead of hashtag United, I've got Spurs winning the FA Cup and Mourinho to solidify himself as an icon and a legend. He's got to bring him the trophy. Uh, but that's for more down the line. You've got to subscribe to see a podcast because if that does happen, then you've got to come back to this video and say, holy moly, guacamole, Costa, what do you know that we do not know? I don't know. <laughs> Takes us to the next game. City versus City. Manchester City versus Leicester City. Kevin De Bruyne, hell of a player. He's playing a little bit more attacking now with David Silva gone, obviously. And I think I think that's better for entertainment levels, but not so much for the opposition. I think he's slowly starting to fit himself into the number 10. I think Gabriel Jesus scoring last week was big also because obviously Aguero is still injured. Um, and I think Leicester haven't been too convincing. Again, again, two games, three games, that's all it's been. I'm going to go for a City 3-1 win, however. Manchester City three one win. Uh, I'm feeling confident. I think Nathan Ake could get you know could could get a start. Um, I don't know. There's something about City where I'm liking them. I'm liking them. I'm liking. I don't like them because I go for United. But we'll touch on Liverpool. But yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. It's very interesting. West Ham versus Wolves is the next batch of this game week three fixture, ladies and gentlemen. And West Ham, you know. Apart from, apart from Suchec, Antonio, how long can Antonio keep on scoring them goals? I think that's the big question. He gets injured twice a year, religiously. And how long he can keep on scoring them goals and keep him up, I'm not too sure. You saw Yanni in the interviews, a former West Ham fan, cancelled his membership. He said they're not getting relegated. Uh, I'm going for a Wolves 2-1 win. Wolves signing Nelson Semedo for like 21 mil was crazy good signing. You think of the right-hand side now. Adama Traore and Nelson Semedo behind. I'll see you when you're older. That is unbelievable. Obviously, loss of Diego Yota. They've got the, the youngster Podence coming in, who's 
been banging goals in recently, banging good performances, which I think Podence will slow into that Diego Yota role quite easily. Uh, but I'm going to go for a comfortable 2-1 win. I think they might concede early on, but Jimenez will easy does it. Next game, Fuller, Fuller, Fulham versus Aston Villa. And this game is where everyone goes to bed and no one watches. I'm sorry. Oh, I've got a stitch. Um, yeah, I'm going to go one on draw. I don't think it's... It's not going to keep the fans up at night, is it? I mean, Fulham's Fulham. They've got James Bond as their gaffer. Scotty Parker looks like a private private school little boy, but, you know, so be it. Jack Grealish again, too much wax in his hair. Yeah, I'm going to go one all draw. I think Fulham... I'm going to Mitrovic goal. Mitrovic goal. Mitrovic watch. Um, but, yeah, besides that... Eh. Which then takes us to the big game at the end of the season. You start with one big game, Brighton versus United, and you finish with another one, Liverpool versus Arsenal. And I think I'm slowly starting to upset a few Liverpool fans. But guess what? That's what I'm here for. Because Liverpool Liverpool versus Arsenal, there's only one team winning this. <laughs> Bro, it's Liverpool. Liverpool, Thiago. Oh, take a bow. That guy, when he came on, you know, I was watching. I don't like Liverpool, but Chelsea fans are starting to stir me up a little bit too. And I'm going to have to start rethinking who comes on this podcast because all my friends are Liverpool and Chelsea fans, and I've only got four friends, so it's what's the point? Um, but but like Liverpool, Thiago, I hope he starts because it's almost like a similar thing with I don't know when they first came to this. I, I can't remember, but like like, a, like an Abumian. You know? I think when he first came, people were like I want to watch. I want to watch a bit of Arsenal to see a bum young player. And this, I know for me personally, exact same with Thiago. Because, bro, when he's got the ball at his feet, oh my God. Signing Diego Yota too, which just gives them, which is what I criticised them with at the start of the season, so that if they were to make signings, someone like Diego Yota is exactly what they should have done. That player to come off the bench, who's still the B, C plus rated player, and you, you know he's got to perform when he does make a, an appearance. Much better than Shakiri, Much better than Origi. You can't bring him on the wing. You could easily put Diego Yota in in this game. And I don't think it would make too much of a difference. Um, I can't remember if I said the score. I'm going Liverpool 2-0. I think... I don't think Arsenal will play bad. But I think it's purely Liverpool will just be the team with too much class. And I said, I remember, I said to the boys I could have group chat evidence that as soon as if Thiago signs for Liverpool Liverpool's won the league but you stick to your guns guts and United is still finishing second and City is still winning the league and Liverpool's still finishing third I know call me an idiot don't unsubscribe um, but that's going to wrap us up for the game week three predictions let me know if you like these kind of predictions I think maybe next week or the week after could be making a couple of podcasts now get all the boys back in we've got some cracking lining backstage don't forget to hashtag it. Hashtag United's got to win the FA Cup. Go watch the interview with Yanni. I'm Costa. And remember, always 1-0. Yeah, boy. Is it this way? This way? Sweet.